Mr. and Mrs. Roger Staubach. First of all, could you just tell me who everybody is? Introduce everybody. Well, behind uh, Eugene is Jennifer, our oldest, and Stephanie Marie. Stephanie. This big girl back here is uh, Marianne. <laughs> and Michelle, Jeffrey, and uh, Amy's the one we're going to have trouble with here because she's going to be all over the place. She's one year old. It's obvious that your family is very important to you. Well, that's our existence is, is you know, each other, and uh, we enjoy each other. It's, it's amazing, though, because I grew up as an only child, so uh, Marianne is part of a big family, and, and this is an experience for me. Uh, the girls are growing up, and they have their, uh, their needs and uh, you know, what's, what's good for them, and I've got to you know, devote the, the time, which I enjoy doing, uh, you know, with them. And as they grow older, of course, their, their personalities change, and, and I have to adjust to that, and, as well as Marianne. But it's, it's really fun. They're, they're all good, and uh, it's, it's been a great experience so far. Dallas seems to play a football game every Thanksgiving. When do you get a chance to celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, we've been uh, pretty much into playing on Thanksgiving Day, so we celebrate it uh, after the game. Uh, we have a big celebration tomorrow night with some friends. Uh, the game, of course, depends on my celebrating. We've, we've had a couple of tough games on Thanksgiving, and I have a hard time getting into the uh, celebration, but as a family, we're celebrating after the game. Dozens of athletes around the National Football League committed not only to family, but also community and charity. And prior to the game, Pat Summerall had a presentation to make. NFL Charities was formed back in 1973 to collectively, uh, by the member clubs, donate grants of money to worthy causes on a nationwide basis. Since that time, it's been something like $1.3 million. This is Mr. Arthur Copeland on my left, who is president of the U.S. Uh, Blind Athletes Association. And, of course, the gentleman in the middle is Roger Staubach, who is a member of the advisory board. And Roger, uh, I'll let you take it over from there. Well, Pat, I've been uh, on the board, and the association uh, was formed in 1976, the uh, U.S. Association for Blind Athletes. And at last year, there was over 500 young men that participated in, uh, in its programs. Uh, this coming year, there's some new programs uh, getting started. I know one is weightlifting. There's been swimming, track, and we just want to thank the uh, NFL and also the board of uh, directors for NFL Charities for this uh, $10,000 contribution to the U.S. Association of Blind Athletes. And, of course, Mr. Copeland is the president, and I'm giving you the check, sir. Well, Roger, on behalf of all of us at USABA, the United States Association for Blind Athletes, I want to thank NFL Charities for their support of USABA and uh, the work that we are doing. I speak, of course, for blind athletes throughout the country. And Roger, for you personally, for all your interest and your effort, you've been an inspiration to us, and I want to thank you again for everything you've contributed. Thank, thank you, you thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you both very much. Thank you very much. All right, and thank you, Pat. Of course, the Players Association is involved. Well, you're talking about being proud of people, isn't it? Uh, Ed Garvey, who's executive director of the NFL Players Association, called me today and said that they collected $25,500 among themselves for the Daryl Stingley Scholarship Fund, which is for Daryl Stingley, the injured wide receiver from New England Patriots, who's in a Chicago hospital right now, and, and it's really a great story. All right, I happened to read the New York Times that Stingley's feeling much better, which is great news. George, second half, technically, what must Washington do? Well, I think the big thing is they have to uh, get a lot of pride and realize that they're playing on national television. They're playing for first place. Uh, they're the Washington Redskins. They have to run the ball, not just continually throw it, because Dallas will tee off and sack the quarterback. Going to get close, Greg? I doubt it. All right, let's go to Pat Summerall. <laughs> okay, Brent, thank you very much. One of the outstanding events ever is what you're about to hear from Texas Stadium, a Thanksgiving salute to the USA. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Mike Thomas, the rest of the Redskins, and Billy Kilmer in the background. Looks like Joe Theismann is going to be back, though, as a starting quarterback. He was loosening up just moments ago. The Redskins had one yard passing, 44 rushing, for a total of 45 yards, 295. Dallas is almost to their game average in the first half.
Raphael Septian blind drive kickoff is taken by one of the up men. The 38 is Gerard Clarence Harmon. Sorry. He gets outside to 40. It will be. Uh, I haven't seen the Redskin quarterback yet. It's Theismann, all right. It is Theismann. They used to be Thiesman until he won the highest when it became Thiesman. Is that true? Is that a <laughs> I don't know. Sounds good, though. That's what happened. And the quarterback battle in the first half between Thiesman and Staubach. Thiesman was shaken just a little bit in the closing minutes of the first half, but now he is back. It's 20 to nothing Dallas in the event you just joined us. And that's Mike Thomas hit in the hole by Charlie Waters and Thomas just broke that tackle. That's the longest Redskin run of the day. And that's why George Allen said they can't come out and tee it up and throw every play. They've got to try to establish a rushing game once again. Thomas, as we said, playing on a gimpy ankle, bump, bounces outside and really runs over Charlie Waters, the safety man, who's one of the better tacklers around. That's an effort right there. Cliff Harris came over to take him down, a six-yard pickup. Seven-yard pickup, make it. And second and three. And this is John Riggins for the short side. And Riggins is met by Charlie Waters, and this time he takes him down. He did not get enough for a first down, I don't believe. Fugit, number 84, the former Dallas Cowboy, got a pretty good block on Thomas Henderson, turned him all the way upside down. But I'll tell you one thing, the lateral movement of the guys in blue and white is something. Watch to the left now, you'll see Henderson being turned upside down, and yet the recovery is pretty good by the rest. Harvey Martin has gone out, and Larry Bethea, this year's first round draft choice for Dallas, comes in as you look at the Washington Redskins operating from straight at midfield, third and one. Riggins and Thomas, the setbacks, and Theismann's going to throw it. And he does to Riggins. First down for the Redskins in Dallas territory. This is the best looking drive already today for Good Washington. Good move. Kept few get the tight end in to double up on Ed Jones and just slipped it to that big good running back. He's got speed. Little spread out, which gets him away from Larry Cole. Dumps it to a fullback who runs like a halfback. Charlie Waters, Bob Brunick took him out of bounds, but it's a Redskin first down. Harvey Martin is back, but there is out. First down, Washington, line of scrimmage, Dallas 38. First drive of the second half. Riggins gets the call. Riggins breaks into the secondary, hurdles over Cliff Harris, and gets about eight. Looks like the Redskins were scalded at halftime. I imagine Pardee might have thrown some cleats around in there. Different look, huh? Entirely. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire, Texas Stadium, in Irving, Texas, halfway between Dallas and Fort Worth. And quite a ballpark. Five-yard pickup by Riggins on that play, and again, Riggins gets the call. He'll get close to a first down, but not quite. He's met by Harvey Martin with some help from his friend. Harvey Martin was a third-round draft choice who still says, I don't know if I'm good enough. Each year, it's a process of maintaining a high level. Some kind of a hustle man, though, and a very outspoken fellow. He goes out now. And Bethea takes his place. I would imagine because of that bad leg, they feel that Bethea might be a little bit stronger against the run. Now, this is third and two. Last time in this situation, Theismann ran that sprint out pass. Time it's Thomas, and he is taken down and defeated by Ed Jones with some help. Bob Brunig, I believe, was the other Cowboy tackler. Put a 230-pounder on Ed Jones. Riggins goes out and tries to cut him. In fact, he takes ball carrier blocker to everybody, sort of stuffs him. Last three weeks, Big Ed has been playing and playing very well. Happened somewhere in that Miami game, didn't it, down yep. in the Orange Bowl? Mark Mosley of uh, the Redskins from 48 yards out. Theismann will hold, and Mosley drills it. He is 7 of 11 from that distance. Right down the middle. 8 for 12 from outside the 40. That's a remarkable statistic. Mark Mosley puts the Redskins on the scoreboard. The score is Dallas 20, Washington 3. 
Washington scoring drive kept off by a 48-yard field goal by Mark Mosley. Looked like those numbers you just saw. That ought to be Butch Johnson. And Butch runs into a pack of Redskins. Number 50 was one of the hitters. That's Pete Wysocki. One of the others, Don Harris. And Roger Staubach is still a quarterback, and I think the Dallas offense better get the ball moving a little bit. 20 to 3 is the score. Cotton Bowl will pit Notre Dame against the Southwest Conference winner. Yeah, that should be Houston. And Lindsey Nelson has been doing that since, since he can remember. I think about 19 of them. He'll be there with Pitch and Paul, the Golden Boy. Huh? Right. Huh? Probably Houston against Notre Dame. Stays in motion. Roger Staubach gives the Kennedy set. So a set squirts into the secondary. Mike Curtis made the tackle. Sort of a quick draw where the quarterback takes it back and the back just waits for it, but it's a very quick draw. And Frederick's playing left tackle, and that time it looked like he might have opened a pretty good hole. Pat Donovan, by the way, the regular left offensive tackle, pulled a groin muscle last Tuesday in practice and apparently aggravated it earlier today. He is on the sideline. Uh, six yard pickup by Dorset. Uh, make it second and six. Dorset again bangs away. Chris Hamburger led the charge for the Redskins. The Redskins are in that 30 defense. They had butts over the nose. Coy Bacon and Lutz at the defensive end. And the four linebackers, not a bad defensive series. They look good in that defense. With Big Dave Butts in front of any center. They figured they get a stalemate there. A sign with uh, what looks like Tom Landry smiling. It's pretty good artwork, though. They're really becoming sophisticated, these sign painters. A lot of people claim they've never seen him smile. But he does. Roger Starbuck runs for the first down. We talked about all those playoff possibilities. Left a couple of Redskins lying down on the ground. The 69 is still there, Barry Brooks. Landry had the great to get into that what if happens there and what if happens here. Landry's explanation was, I figure if we qualify, somebody will come tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for it to ring, yeah. right? Big effort by Roger, and he really got hit. That's the third time on third down situations that he has been able to scramble for a first down. Scott Laidlaw and Tony Dorsett, the running back, and left tackle Andy Frederick started too soon. Frederick, by the way, started the season as a regular right tackle before Rayfield Wright came back. He is 6'6", 255, second year man from New Mexico. There a lobo, is. a big lobo. Big, yes. Randy White and Larry Cole looking on. Randy doesn't want to be on the bench. He likes to somehow get involved, yes. Dorsett goes out. And so the running backs will be Preston Pearson and Scott Laidlaw. Things are quieted down a little bit right now. First and 15, Dallas. Outside to Laidlaw. Hit by Mike Curtis. Well, McClinton was there with Mike. Again, the 30, 34 defense, and they blitzed Hamburger from the left of your screen. Roger had a pretty good call against the outside blitz on this, but good recovery, especially by McClinton, you mentioned. And Curtis. 30's tough to do anything with, isn't it, if it's played right, huh? The key is the man in front of the center. If he can just get a stalemate, then you got something going. Now they go back to a four-man front, figuring that the uh, passing situation comes up. Next game secondary remains the same as it was at the beginning of the game. Jake Scott and Kenny Houston. Handoff is to Laidlaw. There's a helmet collision earlier. Laidlaw had over 100 yards in the first half. Average 10 yards to carry at a 57-yard run. 
Great play by Coy Bacon that time. He really stunted to the inside and makes a great defensive play. Watch to the left of your screen now, and you'll see number 80. Stunt to the inside, and while he's being held and blocked by Frederick, still stopped the play. Third down, about 10 for the Cowboys. They lead it 20 to 3. Nine minutes, 10 seconds left, third quarter. Third and 10. Shotgun for Roger Starback. Jump shot pass for Tony Hill. He's got it. Starback just threw it up in the air, short deliberately, it looked like. Now you were a defensive back. What does he do in a situation like this? If the ball had been thrown like Roger wanted to throw it, Bird Lavender's in great shape. He turns to go up. Now he should be looking for the ball. He does. But Hill comes back, and it looks like Lavender might trip on the rug and stumble for a moment. The ball was up there a long, long time. Almost looked like Tony Hill knew that he was going to throw it short like that. That had a hang time of about five seconds. I don't think it was meant to hang quite that much. All right, it's a Dallas first down. Yeah, at the Washington 23, Dorsett and Laidlaw now, the running back tandem for the Cowboys. Go back. Calls it, caught it backwards. Brad Dusek, the outside linebacker, got the hand on it. There's Raphael Septian over in his house. Got his own little hitting cage there. Pat, you have one of those in the sidelines behind the old giant bench? Uh, no. I did well to have shoes. Sometimes the Giants didn't have a bench in those old days. I remember they used to burn it at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I was there one day when they did that. That's when they eliminated standing room. <laughs> Pearson comes in motion left. Starback takes. Now the blitz is on. They have a screen call. And he had to just throw it away. There was no receiver there. Hey, good defensive series by the Redskins this time, except for the high knuckle ball. They have really played them on the line of scrimmage extremely even. Here comes Burton Lawless along with uh, Tony Darcet into Roger Starbuck's huddle. Out go Rafferty and Laidlaw. Rogers now eight for 15 for 183 yards. He's nearing a few uh, cowboy records, I think. But Very close. Much more. Protection starts to break and then does break, and Roger Starback goes down just barely. Carl Lorch tripped him up, and we should see Septiano. Lorch. Up slow. And you know, Brad Dusek showed you that they do think, though. Roger was on the ground, but had not been touched down. And number 59 had a real shot if they're really trying to hurt the quarterback all the time and didn't take it. Once in a while, we ought to point that out, I think. Our information from Doug Todd and George Heddleston, who do such a wonderful job for the Cowboys, uh, is that Pat Donovan is doubtful. Because of that cool drawing we showed you about before. Jeff Roku, however, is expected to play in the next series. Here is Septian. This one he hit. 43 yards out for Raquel Septian. Makes it. The Dallas Cowboys 23. The Redskins 3. 7.09 left in the third quarter. Seven minutes, nine seconds left, third quarter. Cowboys 23, Redskins 3. Septian's kickoff. Sails way over the head of Tony Green. That's two he's done like that. And there's no wind to his back in this stadium. I'll tell you, it's closed all the way around. Who do you think he's talking to? Can't be arguing with anybody upstairs. They've had a pretty fair offensive afternoon. But the early turnovers were the key to Dallas getting on top and staying there. A fumble recovery by Benny Barnes gave Dallas a first and goal at the six, and they took it in in three plays. Septian had already kicked two field goals, so that made it 13-0. And then there was a 57-yard touchdown shot from Roger Starback to Drew Pearson. Three field goals by Septian. 
The last play was sort of a misdirection. They figure that Dallas might overrun this play. That's how much they respect the Dallas defense. But instead of overrunning it, the fellows from the offside come back and make the tackle on it. And they're all fast. Joe Theismann is still the Redskin quarterback. Billy Kilmer warmed up one time when Theismann was shaken early in the uh, late in the first half. But now it's Theismann. He has Ricky Thompson and McDaniel split wide to the right. And he doesn't have much time. McDaniel just has it bounce off the end of his fingers, covered by Mark Washington, but the pressure again was on Joe Theismann. Those are catchable, though. McDaniel looks like he's lost his concentration. That ball hit him right on the hands. It looked to me like he was worrying about where Mark Washington was. But all Theismann can do is load it and throw it. He can't catch it. Washington plays Miami next week. And Dallas will play New England. Neither has a vacation then. Looking forward to Philadelphia, Dallas. Oh, in two weeks. Yep. Home game for you. Again, the blitz is on. This time it's McDaniel who's taken out of bounds by Washington, but a Dallas uh, Washington first down. Close to it. No, it's not a first down. Beg your pardon. They got him out of bounds. McDaniel and Cliff Harris had some words, but McDaniel made that catch, and the ball was really, really whistled. crowd at Texas Stadium this Thanksgiving Day extravaganza has become part of the Dallas social circle over the years. Mike Bragg back to a kick for the Redskins. And if the Redskins have any thoughts of turnovers, they've got to look for a couple of these to bounce their way. A high kick from Bragg will be fair caught or signal for a fair catch. By Butch Johnson, it hits the ground and goes away. John Harris downed it. Some sort of discussion going on about the ball being touched back upfield more from where they finally stopped it, but it's still 23-3 Dallas. It's outside. Dallas ball at their own 44, 5.59 left. Third quarter. Cowboys 23, Redskins 3. 34 defense, too, by Washington. Dave Butts in front of center John Fitzgerald and Roger Starbuck. As a pass kicked off by Gerard Williams. Starts back up the sideline and out of bounds he goes in front of the Dallas Panthers again. Kimberly Square is Tony Hill knocking out of bounds. Everybody from New Orleans ended up in the Dallas bench a week ago, and that's one place you don't want to go for trouble. But I'll tell you one thing, the, the Redskin defense likes the 34. They look like they're very confident when they play it. And a good play by Williams. Heck of a catch he made. Pass intended for Tony Hill. It's Harvey Martin who limped off in the last defensive series. And Bethea's in. They're going to penalize Tony Hill for a bad tackle, I suppose. Bad temper. No foul. Late hit out of pounds. Number 80. Defense. First down. 80 is Tony Hill. The fourth interception for Williams. And the Redskins can get back in this game. Indeed they can. Dallas flex. And they blitz on first down. And Theismann throws outside and McDaniel and again. Off his fingertips. That's a good throw. Boy, he's caught some fantastic, almost impossible grabs. Square out that gives him a little trouble, doesn't it? Larry Bethea was one of the defensive ends on the last series. Now they've made some changes. They still have Ed Jones and Randy White. Harvey Martin is now back in the game with Larry Cole, the defensive tackle. Jeff Hill's two did not come back. Thomas. And the Dallas defense led by Thomas Henderson. And Charlie Waters, the safety man, they really support. He and Harris are 
incredible at how about playing solid safety on the tackles watch him converge okay from our what do you call this the ice guy sky eye sky eye you're looking right down at it. there's henderson in the backside and that's number 41 that's bottling the play up in the front part of it wonder if you get is going to be called for a pass pattern. The tight end has not caught a ball. Hey, there's your friend. With hey! Whistling Ray with his favorite stallion. <laughs> <laughs> it's third down, and Riggins has some room. But not for long. Ray and Kyle cut him down, and Thomas Henderson hit him high. You have to run against them for a steady diet. Uh, you just can't advance the football. It's a strong side power sweep by a good looking running back and a big one. Takes it right back to him. Watch the pursuit now. Look how many blue and white shirts come from nowhere. Kyle's at high speed. Under. This will be by Mark Mosley from 53 yards out. Blocked. Reflected. And they're saying, get away from it. Wisely so. Blocked by the guy who is 6'9", Ed Jones. And when you block one of Park Mosley's as high as he gets the ball, you better be 6'9". It's 23-3. Takes a look at that last block field goal. Theisman holding, Mosley kicking. Watch this 6'9 basketball player from Tennessee State. Too tall, Jones. That's an airlift. What if he came down on you after he blocked it? You'd need an airlift. First and 10, Dallas has the football. They're at their own 36. The handoff is to Dorsett. 11 or 12 flags again. Joe Lavender made the tackle, but Tony Dorsett has a Dallas first down. Might get a clip coming back from the man in motion. It looked like Butch Johnson might have come back and inadvertently hit somebody from behind on the play. Oh, face mask. Sky eye again. All right, now watch to the top of your screen, the man in motion coming back. He's trying to trap inside, and Dorsett doesn't even see this. He goes outside of it anyway. Now, the must grab the face mask after uh, our picture there. Oh, now we're under mo underway again. Defense. Stop. Yeah, there it is. First down, Dallas. Eighth penalty on the Redskins. Dorsett, 16 carries, 46 yards. He went over the 1,000 for the year last week. Take this to Dorsett. The throw. Pearson. For a 10. Out of bounds at the three. Joe Lavender. Drew Pearson. And the main thing for a man in motion, the offensive coaches will tell you they've got to have extreme balance and know when to break toward the line of scrimmage. Came back inside on the man in motion and cut it right through the middle. Well, Getty had to go airborne, but Drew Pearson, the steady one, who has caught passes in, what, 58 straight games now? A lot of people lose time and they go up in the air, but he doesn't seem to lose much. Comes down in full stride, first and goal, Dallas. At the two. Laid Law has it. Pretty basic. Oh, look at Scott and company drive off that ball, huh? Herbert Scott, the left guard, did some super job. As he has been doing for some time now. Dallas 29, Washington 3. Dallas 30, Washington 3. 
return to Texas Stadium after this word from your local station. Plays it took them. And Scott Lindbaugh scored his second touchdown of the day. John Harris cuts back across the field and still struggles and goes down. Bob Steele, Robert Steele takes him down. Harris put a pretty good move on Steele to get to the outside. And number 82, who joined this team about the third week of the season, looks like he might have found a home here in Dallas, doesn't he? They say he has the best hands catching the football of anybody on the team. If they're better than Drew Pearson, they're pretty good. Patrick, uh, there have only been three second-half touchdowns scored against the Cowboys in their last nine games. That's phenomenal. Here's John Riggins banging straight ahead. Ed Jones again made the tackle. By the way, uh, talking about playoffs again, the first way to break a tie within the division between two clubs is the head-to-head -head competition. Washington won the first game 9-5. Dallas leads this one 30-3. The second way is the best one-loss tied percentage in games played within the division. And in that case, that would go to Dallas because they've only lost once. And the ninth way is the toss of the old coin. That's right? the only one I've got to <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mike Thomas. And the wall is right there. He got perhaps back to the line of scrimmage before Randy White and Larry Cole stacked him up. The teams that have played Dallas well, and those, of course, that have beaten them, seem to do it early and threw the ball pretty well. Got a couple of turnovers, uh, Dallas mistakes that we hadn't seen in a lot of in a year. Well, we saw that happen two weeks in a row. Minnesota and Miami. But now it would appear they got things uh, pretty well. Ed Jones and Larry Cole converge on Mike Thomas. Watch him do that. Here's why it's so hard to run against this defense. Because there's always somebody from the backside that can help out. This time, the safety man standing right in the hole, Hughes. Ed Jones is just getting a little bit too strong to handle. I think you got right about that. He's playing better now during this stretch of the last four games than I've ever seen him. And they do play as they practice. They said that in practice, he has picked his tempo up. Bragg has punted seven times today already, and you're about to watch number eight. Uh, unless they do something like uh, throw out a punch and they don't do Flag is already down, so what's Johnson heads for the outside. And finally a stop by Clarence Harmon, but a flag is down. I would imagine if it's against Washington. Uh, Dallas will keep it like it is. Ike Forte is down too, uh, running back out of Arkansas. Now he's up. Well, they're going to make bring it back. There are some loyal Redskins in this part of the country, and I guess some loyal CBS fans too. It's against Dallas. Before the kick, first off. Dick Jorgensen. There we go. Whistling Ray, the cowboy, is after an Indian. He chased the Indian right up the aisle there. Look at that. <laughs> first down, Washington, and Theismann gives the ball to Riggins, and he gets about six. Bob Brunig makes the tackle. Carry number nine for Riggins. He's got 34 yards. Tony Dorsett, Pat Donovan on the Cowboys sideline. Dorsett's handling his high-profile image uh, 
much better now, and I think most people think Tom Landry handled it pretty well by just not letting him start. When he was not present at a Saturday, Saturday practice. Benny Malone and John Riggins now the running backs, and that's Benny Malone. He is wrapped up immediately by Randy White and Larry Cole. Bruni gets some middle linebacker too, you know it. The guitarist from Arizona, right? Watch the move. Watch Randy White to the right of your screen, 54. Takes the good block. Oh, he just defeated it, didn't he? And doesn't even get low to make the tackle. Just stands up and takes it. Strong person is Randy White. He's their enforcer, I'm told. Very enthusiastic about it. Mike Thomas and John Riggins now the setbacks and flags fly everywhere. Jim Harlan might have done. 68. 12 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Still third down. Dallas 30. Washington 3. A heck of an offensive mind is helping party with that offense. Uh, Joe Walton, there's nobody better how to sort of take a defense apart. But where do you start when it's Dallas? Tough to start on third and ten. Bill Feisman has to right now. Mike Thomas, flag is down already. More than enough for Washington first down, but penalty flags as Randy Hughes and Cliff Harris converge to stop Mike Thomas. It's going to be the play will take the play. The Redskins look like they have the option. What Thomas can really move, and he is really a great pass receiver. Number 31, defense, decline, first down. Barnes, what Randy White did. Barnes just grabbed the receiver, Thomas, just as he made the catch. Here's Randy White against Saul. No illegal slap of the head by White either. He's caving everybody I in. I tell you. <laughs> everybody got a little piece of Randy that time. But he'll be back. He had three different guys getting shots on him. Ken Redskins, four seconds to go third quarter. Ball at the Dallas 43. Benny Malone is one of the running backs, and Riggins is the other. And this is Malone. Couple. Charlie Waters on the tackle. That would be the last play of the third quarter from Texas Stadium. And the Cowboys lead the Redskins at this point, 30 to 3. The six winners here today will be representing the Dallas Cowboys at the NFC Division competition on December 17th in Detroit. Presenting the trophies to the area champions, Marv Ellsworth, District Sales Manager, Dallas Ford District Division. The eight-year-old winner, number 21, Leon M. Clay from Gladewater, Texas. The nine-year-old winner is number 10, Wayne Bailey from Edmond, Oklahoma. The 10-year-old champion is number 25, David Browndike from Dallas, Texas. The 11-year-old champion is number 12, Todd Thompson from Sepulpa, Oklahoma. The 12-year-old winner is number 42, Rob Vance from Dallas. And the 13-year-old champion is number 44, Scott Church from Stanton, Texas. So congratulations. And now let's send these youngsters to the division competition with a nice round of applause. Joe Theismann crouching in the Washington huddle. Line of scrimmage. The Dallas 42. Theismann is 5 for 16 for 69 yards. And he's really had to work at it, you know. It's been a hard day for number 7. Riggins. Benny Barnes slings him down just past the line of scrimmage with help from Cliff Harris. Play looked good for about two seconds, didn't it? And then Barnes came up and grabbed the big fella and threw him right down. And Riggins bared his shoulder. <laughs> Scott Laidlaw had over 100 yards at the half and hasn't carried the ball but twice in the second half. Third down, Redskins, they trailed 30 to 3. is 
hit by Keetal Jones just as he let it go. Ed Jones straight all around Theismann's head. The pass intended for John McDaniel and Keetal. He's going to be met and congratulated by Ernie Stockman. He went over Kazeel, who had a good block on him, just over the top. Daniel, I believe, lost his footing momentarily. He's trying to run at deep sidelines. Must be a run in the rug out there. He looked like he did lose a little footing there. And Theismann had no chance. Mike Bragg now standing back at his own 44-yard line with punt in the direction of Foot Johnson. We'll try to hang this one high. Now he goes to the sideline. Redskins bang it back and down it at the three. Great play. Clarence Herman was the guy who was down there before the ball and knocked it back. Mike Bragg, a good punt. A full slate of regional games. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Cowboys 30, Redskins 3, and Dallas has the football at their own four-yard line, first and 10. Opening seconds of quarter number four. Preston Pearson and Scott Laidlaw. Go back. That's Laidlaw gets out to about the seventh. Carl Lorch, number 71, made the first contact for Washington. Redskins are thinking turnover any way they can get it now. The defense will have to gamble, and they'll have to keep... Dallas deep in their own territory if they can't get the ball. They're going to be probably gambling a lot. Looks like they've made up their mind no time to stick with that three-man front. They play it darn well. Mm -hmm. Still Laidlaw and Preston Pearson. Laidlaw again, I believe. To about the 10. Perry Brooks made that tackle. Shy of the 10 to about the 9. It's really hard to tell how well a team that's losing to Dallas is playing because Landry's team, when they are together and right, they really are almost unstoppable both ways. And it must be really frustrating for a coach, huh? Keep wondering and trying not to say to yourself, hey, they're better than we are. Third down. And off is the north set. He stepped out of bounds on the far side of the field, and I believe just managed to stay inside long enough to get the first down. <laughs> inside handoff. Watch people get pretty good shots, but they're not quite enough. There's Brooks. Now Dusek gets a tag on him. And he does just get by Williams to get it. Gerard Williams was the last Redskin. They finally got him out of bounds, but Dorsett got the first down. 30 to 3 to score. Dallas leads with 12.35 left to play. of Billy Joe Dupree, but Roger was moving in the wrong direction. Looks like they're Had throwing to. a couple of plays in here just to foul up perhaps the films that somebody's going to be looking at down the road. That's a couple of new wrinkles in a row. You notice he had Butch Johnson in motion twice and finally wound up staying in the backfield blocking. Got to be a 5 beta kappa just to get Landry's system <laughs> down. It takes some time. But when you do... They all say if you just believe what he says, it'll work. Sometimes uh, it's tough to believe. But you're still trying to maintain a high pitch of enthusiasm as well. Gets back to Dorset. No place to go as Brad Dusick led the Redskin defensive charge with help from Carl Lorch. Roger Staubach, by the way, is 9 of 18 for 218 yards. And the long touchdown pass to Drew Pearson. Lawrence really played that for a defensive end. He went all the way to the sidelines and helped on that tackle. Last two or three weeks, Roger has really been sharp throwing the football. 
He has a tendency once in a while to throw high when he isn't throwing well, but he looks like he's very strong in the arm, huh? He looks like uh, he's very confident. He sets up in the shotgun this time. Back there with him is Preston Pearson. He stays in the block for a while and then comes out. Intended for Drew Pearson. And that one was wild high. You said. <laughs> he really hooked up on that one. In fact, Landry almost jumped up and stood it. <laughs> he was a pretty tough defensive back with the Giants, though. Uh, Very tough. Everybody acts like he's unemotional, but they tell me he'd really stick here. Old Eagles told me he was a pretty tough guy. He's a heck of a punter, too. Tony Green will be back for the Redskins at his own 45. That's Danny White. Good strong kick. Chases Green back to his own 41. He tries to get around the corner, but Thomas Henderson. Hollywood always has done a super job on special teams, and he does again. It was a late hit out of bounds on that last punt. It was covered so well by Thomas Henderson. And that's why the line of scrimmage is now back at the Washington 22. Dallas leads 30 to 3. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Texas Stadium. And John Riggins gets the call. The carry and get the couple, and that's all. Gene Fugit, the tight end number 84, that really helped in those early victories. The first six has not caught a pass. Dallas safety men have just kept him out of the possibility. Huh? Tribute to Charlie Waters. Harris, Bruni, the middle linebacker. Right. Redskins are down 30 to 3. Bill Seisman has a second down situation at his own 25. Seisman throws the look-in pass to Ricky Thompson. Stopped by Aaron Kyle. But a good pattern and a good pass. Player. Ricky came over from Baltimore, the Colts at one time at 83, and he runs a good pattern and catches it. Got a quiet crowd now at Texas Stadium. Cowboys comfortably in front on this Thanksgiving afternoon. I hope it was a good day for you. It has been for Dallas. Heisman with a lot of time, and Mike Thomas was the intended receiver. Couldn't quite hand it on. D.D. Lewis, the linebacker on the coverage. Good coverage, but a good pattern by Thomas and a heck of an effort. Heisman just let him clear D.D. a little bit and just couldn't make the connection. And that happened Sunday. Thomas coming out of the game. Benny Malone takes his place. Cowboys sent in backup defensive men. 65, Dave Stalls comes in. That way for Larry Cole. Randy Hughes is the free safety man. And goes Theisman and Dave Stalls was the hitter. A flag is down also. I think Randy White was held. Looked like a full tackle. It was thrown early, not early enough for Joe Theismann, he just stayed up there trying to look for somebody and got knocked off underneath the football. Boy, the Cowboys keep coming in with good people, don't they? Dave Stalls, you don't see very much of. But he got that last sack. Trouble is, they're so hungry when they do get in there, they want to show Big Brother they can play. What's the right part of your screen? It's a lookout block that time. Stalls is about... 64, offense, decline, third down. They were holding Randy White. That was Ron Saul. That Dave Stalls is from Northern Colorado. It'll be third down now for the Washington Redskins. 10.02 left to play. Dallas 30, Redskins 3. Here they come again. Randy White got a hand on it. Slapped it away. Third and long. Better call your mother before you drop straight back. That's about all Joe Theismann can do. Watch the rush. Randy 
right is like a runaway train in there. And he seems to get better by the fourth period. He's got, you know, all systems go. Danny White again is loosening for Dallas. So we'll probably see him as the quarterback the next series. They lead it 30 to 3. The winner of this will be the leader in the, AFC, in the NFC East. Oh, good kick again by Mike Bragg. Butch Johnson called for the fair catch. First man down for the Redskins right there was Don Harris. So we have 945, 949 make it left to play with Dallas leading 30 to 3. They never have passed that hole in the roof. <laughs> That's right. Looks like the Hindenburg. It does, doesn't it? Texas Stadium is covered except for the area just directly over the playing field itself. Danny White gives to Tony Dorsett. He breaks around to the outside and has a Dallas first down before he's shoved out of bounds by Joe Lavender. Scott has done a heck of a job pulling at that guard spot, number 68. Well, that time the skin shifted over right into it, slanted that way, and Dorsett still beat the defense. You know who I'm happy for on a day like Thanksgiving? The, I was in the hospital a little bit my, myself this summer. I know. It's the people that are sort of laid up and can't get home for Thanksgiving, and we are perhaps their outlet today to watch something and be entertained. There are a lot of those people that are watching. Well, good thought. Dorsett and Laidlaw, the running backs. Robert Steele came in motion, and Laidlaw goes for about seven or eight. That's straight ahead. He's had a good day. Watch Herbert Scott block again. Straight ahead. Watch 68. Cross block. Frederick inside. Scott outside. Hey, Laidlaw doesn't waste any time getting to the hole either. No. Brad Dusick was the tackler. Like a big Dallas Cowboy fan. Second and two, the eight-yard pickup by Laidlaw. Gave him 121 yards for the day. Dorsett. About a yard shy of a first down before he stopped by Harold McClinton. Roger Starbuck finished up nine for 19 for 218 yards. Was he intercepted or was that out of... He was intercepted the he one intercepted time. Intercepted one right? time by Gerard Williams, the one-handed catch. Danny White hasn't thrown the ball a lot. Nine attempts and five completions. Jim Cooper checks into that Dallas offensive setup now. Danny White has it. Quick tap, first down. Brad Dusek on the tackle. But Dallas first down with 8-18 left of the play. Cowboys lead 30 to 3. That's going to make the defense even more frustrated and angrier than ever. Quarterback picks up the first down. Somebody over there is burning. That's the situation on Thanksgiving Day in Dallas. I need to remind you that it would appear that we're running a little bit long. The CBS Evening News will be seen immediately after this game on most of the CBS stations. 45 left to play as Danny White gives to Dorsett. He broke a couple of tackles. Mike Curtis finally got him down. I'll tell you, McClinton had him nailed in there. Had him nailed inside and got away. CBS, the Sun Bowl, rise and shine. Good old El Paso. Take a look at this. The man in motion, Johnson, comes back to the inside and goes through on the middle linebacker. Gets a pretty fair block, but the Clinton beats it. Look at this. That's nothing but a little of the thigh guard. Second down, Dallas. The Washington 48. There is Preston Pearson. The Cowboys rip off another first down. Harold McClinton made the tackle. We remind you again, we'll feature Notre Dame against the winner of the Southwest Conference, probably the Houston Cougars. They have to win one of their last two. Well, the Irish played pretty well in the Cotton Bowl. They didn't look too shabby last year. They took over the number one spot in the country. 
with that victory over Texas Texas last year. Houston it looks like will be the host team this year. Texas goes to that symbol. Robert Steele goes out in motion. Scott Laidlaw struggles for two or three. Laidlaw replacing Newhouse has had a good day. Newhouse, they say, should be back in about two weeks with a hairline fracture, a small bone in his right leg. A fibula. You know about that. I'm familiar with the entire area. This is, uh, as we have said before, quite a ball yard. Those boxes that surround the mezzanine deck are the luxurious way to watch a football game. Preston Pearson and Larry Brinson are now the setbacks to Dallas. Are you surprised that the offensive linemen haven't gotten a breather? But some of them are still in there and the varsity is on the line. They have shuffled a few people around, but they've got a lot of injuries, really. Dallas owns the football. They also own the lead, 30 to 3. Five and a half minutes left to play. The ball is on the 39-yard line of Washington. Danny White, the Dallas quarterback. Robert Steele split wide to the right. Jackie Smith comes in motion. Pitch is back to Larry Brinson. And Brinson uh -huh. down the sideline. Larry Brinson might go in. Here it goes. Brinson came in with four carries, a minus two yards, and he just broke it off for a touchdown, his first of the year. 39-yard touchdown run by number 36, Larry Brinson from Florida. And some of these are bad tackles, and some are just because the young person is playing for the first time, and he's probably got adrenaline you would not believe. Yeah, there's some bad tackles, too. Larry Brinson at one time this year was back coaching at the University of Florida. And the Cowboys called him back. Phone rang, huh? He just ripped off a 36-yard touchdown. Raphael Septian makes it Dallas 37. The Redskins 3. We still have 5 minutes and 23 seconds left to play in this contest. Uh, Dallas has got this one. Dallas 37 now, Washington 3, with 5 minutes, 23 seconds left to play. Bush it. Here is Larry Brinson's touchdown run again. That obviously is not it. From behind the defense, Houston's up trying to fill from the safety spot and misses the initial shot. As we said, the Washington defense may be sort of out of gas by this stage. And worn down. Yep. Raphael Septien will kick off. Who does Dallas have left? New England after 10 days, then the Eagles in Philadelphia, and that was a 14-7 game the first time here. And then the New York Jets. Not easy by any means. Don Harris trying to swing around to the outside. Washington has left, by the way, on their schedule. Miami, oh. Atlanta, and Chicago on Saturday. Last Saturday of the regular season in Washington. A tale of two teams. One having their problems and one that just looks like they're getting it together. Start thinking about those wild card possibilities. And I think, what, 10 and 6? It's certainly not out of the question of being in the playoffs. has no place to go and Mike Hegman made the tackle on Mike Thomas. The Dallas defense has been incredible. Jack Pardee. <laughs> Master of the wobbler, huh? Billy Kilmer warmed up one time today when Joe Theismann was shaken near the end of the first half, but he never never came in. He got one play. One huh? play, that's right. He did. John McDaniel 
wrestled out of bounds by Dennis Thurman. Dallas 37, Washington 3, 420 left now to play. And the Redskins have got to regroup. Never forget Theismann, his senior year in college at Notre Dame, when Parsekian had him on the West Coast against SC in the rain on a regular natural grass, and he must have had 500 yards passing, the darndest throwing of the wet football I think I've ever seen, number seven, did that day. He has a down, Washington first down right now, and he gives the ball to John Riggins. He tries to cut back inside, Larry Bethea made the tackle on Riggins. Fran talking and came in with Bud Grant on a few days' notice with a spread offense and used all five receivers and got a couple of early turnovers and pulled the upset. I sort of thought Washington might have some kind of a spread set up, didn't you? I was sort of led to believe that. Uh huh. 37-7 <laughs> the score. Tyson drops straight back, fires in for Ricky Thompson again. He cuts around to the outside. Dennis Thurman chasing him. And Thurman will take him out of bounds inside the Dallas 20. Just a quick slant. You sort of wonder why he hasn't been playing. He came in with 18. This makes his 20th catch. And boy, he takes it coming across the middle, which most people don't think he can do against the Cowboys. Thurman heads him off at the pass. Thompson injured his hand just a little bit. He comes out now. It'll be first down, Washington, at the Cowboys 17. Dallas record would be improved to nine and four. Washington would be eight and five. They're not by any means out of those playoff possibilities. Here's Theismann. He tried to set up the screen pass, and he did. Guy Brown made a heck of a play. He might have been the only Dallas player that could keep that one from being six points. I wonder why Thomas ran into the pile of players that were trying to block Brown. Anxious. Benny Malone comes in in place of Thomas. Guy Brown, by the way, is a six foot five inch linebacker from Houston. He gets you about a four six forty two. Weighs two thirty. Up on that last play. Heisman drops again. And too tall Jones is close. And touchdown Redskins to Gene Fugit. Charlie Waters back there with him, but that's the first pass Fugit's caught today. The first catch for the former Dallas Cowboy. It'll be coming right at you. The sixth touchdown reception. And I'm telling you, this is some effort. Watch him lay out and get control and then turn it over so he makes the catch. Outstanding, you get outstanding. That makes it 37 to nine. Touchdown down by a Fugit. This is Mark Mosley, number three. The high extra point is good, and it's 37 to 10 with two minutes and 17 seconds left to play. The Cowboys will take over first place in the NFC East. Their record will go to nine and five, a nine and four. The Cowboys 37, the Redskins 10 with two, 17 left to play. And there's our turkey. Our turkey went south. I just checked behind us. It's been taken <laughs> out by the locusts. We congratulate Mr. Bruno Fucci on that work. <laughs> Someone told us that uh, he'd been working on that for two years. But it was beautifully done. I don't believe he worked on it that long. Redskin attempted an onside kick is recovered by Dallas Charlie Waters. Well, Philadelphia has St. Louis, Minnesota, Dallas, Dallas, and the Giants. And they will have the same number of losses as Washington after today. Philadelphia, of course, plays. St. Louis Sunday. Washington would be eight and five. Philadelphia seven and five going into Sunday. Dallas nine and four. Danny White gives to Larry Brinson. And Brinson again breaks a couple of tackles. Or was this Preston Pearson? I'm sorry, I just saw the six. It was Preston. 
he'd like to be a starter, but he never causes a problem being the guy that you can always call on in a tight situation, huh? Clutch receiver, good runner, fine blocker. Two-minute warning. Notification. Or whatever. Tell Remind you. you again that the CBS Evening News will be seen on most of these stations. As soon as this game is over, don't forget the Cotton Bowl, Notre Dame against probably Houston. This is our lineup on CBS. That's one. They also have the Sun Bowl, which features the Texas Longhorns against Maryland. We'll be down for that and then back home to watch some of the other bowl action on And CBS the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Boilermakers makers and the engineers, or they the Ramblin' Reds? Both. Pepper Rogers, the coach. Right. Outstanding snappy dresser. Roger Staubach, by the way, bruised a finger. Although it doesn't look like it. You know, I was at banquets where they gave him the Maxwell Award, and then he came back and won the Burt Bell Award as the professional. And I don't think he looked any different between the time he was a, a midi and when he's the professional with the Cowboys. I talked to him a little bit, a little bit before the game, and they there are a few gray hairs. Are there? But that's, he's still in great shape. Second and seven, Larry Brinson, Preston Pearson, behind Danny White. Preston. Four, five. You checked, you checked Roger Allen gray hair, did you? <laughs> well, he was checking me out. <laughs> Check very hard. <laughs> 37 to 10, Dallas leads Washington. Boy, Harold McClinton has been a busy guy, and he can barely get it back into the defensive huddle. Playing against the young, fresh troops now, and that can make a long plane flight out of the trip back, huh? Oh, boy. Rayfield Wright is getting a rest, and Andy, Andy Frederick plays right tackle. Jim Cooper plays left. The big guy from Temple, 6'5, 265. Over and over again, they overwhelm you with that depth. Billy Joe Dupree goes left. Robert Steele and Butch Johnson split to the right. There goes Butch in motion. To Brinson, and he struggles for near first down yardage. We have a minute and 41 seconds left now. The quarterback uh, should not probably put the ball up. That's the unwritten code. Uh, got a team down 37 to 10. You're not looking for statistics. I guess it's like stealing second base when you're up by 10 runs or something. Well, so far, Danny White has. Not put it up. Brinson did struggle for that first down. Tony Dorsett had 21 carries for 72 yards. Scott Laidlaw, 16 carries for 122 yards. And Larry Brinson, 3 for 45, including that touchdown run. Laidlaw had two touchdowns. He had a 57-yard run as well. There's Danny White. And the Cowboys stroll up. With the clock still running with a minute and 15 seconds left to play. Brinson. Bang straight ahead. Stopped by Harold McClinton, but he had three or four already. Nobody's going to call timeout and stop the clock. That would be hardly necessary at this point, would it? Three yards for Brinson. Less than a minute left to play. Dallas 37, Redskins 10. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Texas Stadium on Thanksgiving Day. Have we seen a better team than Dallas when they're right, when they're right? This game and a game in Milwaukee against the Packers. When we saw them, they looked as good as anybody. That's Brinson again. And he bangs down for another first down. Big Larry Brinson, he goes about 220, stopped by Mark Murphy. Chuck Milton, good old red eye, produced this game. And makes it nice to be away from home on Thanksgiving. Directed by Sandy Grossman. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you to the rest of our group. 
as the Cowboys will just let it run out now. Three. Those guys, as that rolls by, you see who helps. They do the work. Did we we have fun, fun with them at the dinner last night, huh? We all <laughs> had our turkey together. Yeah. Yep. Now look at these two. What do you think that discussion is about? Mosley and Septian. Septian is trying to figure out how he gets all that lift on the ball, huh? He's saying, take off your shoe. Let's see what's in there. There goes Tom Landry. Burton Lawless trots by. But Landry has his team back in first place. As they head up the tunnel, their record will now be nine and four, and Washington will be eight and five. And for Tom Brookshire, will say thank you. And this is Pat Summerall saying, Britt Musburger, it's yours. Okay, Pat, thank you very much. Usual outstanding job by you and Brookie. And now, Coach Allen, I know the Cowboys played so well, but why would the Washington Redskins be so flat for a big game? Well, Brent, I thought Washington could, could win today because I know the rivalry. I know how the players feel about uh, Dallas. I think Dallas started fast. They haven't been starting fast. They were 21 to 69 in the first quarter, and today they scored the first four times they possessed the football. I, th I think the Redskins came out throwing the football, which is really not their style. I think you have to run a little bit against those Cowboys, establish a run, and then throw the football. But Dallas just played a superb ball game and made the Redskins look bad. Indeed. Now, Jimmy the Greek, what does this mean as far as the NFC playoff picture is well, concerned? Brent, it puts L.A. and Dallas in the playoffs. But it makes it at five teams: uh, Minnesota, Green Bay, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and Washington. It's a it's a it's real toss-up. Toss up. And of course, Minnesota and Green Bay meet on Sunday on CBS. Well, and Minnesota's a slight favorite. But Brent, you know, nine and seven, eight and eight could be the fifth wild card. I mean, the second wild card. It's true. Even the Giants have a chance again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the NFL today will continue on CBS live from Dallas in just a moment. <laughs> Uh, Jane, we're a man short. Where's Irv? He's down on the field. He's talking to Roger Staubach. So let's go down to Irv and find out what's happening. Jane and Brent. Uh, Jane, you know this fella. You had spent some time with him last night. Roger Staubach, the winning quarterback. Roger, you have to feel pretty good. Well, well it's a, uh, you know, a great, great victory. We played him in Washington, and it's a very close game, and we didn't get the end zone. And today we started off on the right foot, and we scored. Our running backs, uh, Scott and Tony, and... We're running very well, and Drew made a couple fine catches. So it was, uh, and Tony Hill set up one with a fine catch. So uh, we got off to a good start, which has been unusual for us this year. Well, Roger, it was an awful lot of pregame buildup. You know that there was hate between the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys. Is there anything to that? I don't like to use the word hate. There's uh, probably uh, it's a very competitive rivalry, and it's more than a friendly rivalry. Uh, it's pretty deep rooted, and it, we always play a, a key game against them, and they've won some against us. And uh, today we won a big game, so uh, they're a very fine football team, and uh, have given us all we can handle through the years, and it's been pretty even, actually. Roger, thanks very much, and go in and take a shower. Okay, congratulations, right. Tony Dorsett, the beast from the east. <laughs> Tony, how you doing? I tell you, let me tell the country why we're standing out here on the on the stadium. You know, the, the Dallas Cowboys started a new policy today that. You could not interview the ball players in the locker room, so we had to grab Tony Dorsett and Scott Laidlaw and uh, Roger Staubach out here on the field, and I really appreciate you stopping down here to talk to us, Tony. How do you feel? You had a big day. I feel great. Uh, you know, we played a super game. It was a must game for both clubs, and I think we came out after the short layoff, and, and we played some superb football. It was a must, like I said, must game for both teams, and I think we arose to the challenge. Let me put you on the spot, Tony. You had a lot of trouble handling the ball early with fumbles. The last few weeks, you've handled the ball pretty well. Have you done anything different? Are you just concentrating about hanging on to the ball? What have you done? Well, I think it just goes back to concentration, going back to fundamentals. I think it was a whole problem with our whole team, I think, for, for about a month's span. You know, we were down, and everyone was counting the Cowboys out. Because we weren't, I don't think, mentally prepared. We were waiting for people to go out and do things, make things happen. Instead of going out and, uh, sorry, we were waiting for things to happen. Instead of going out and make things happen. And it was the same with myself. I think it was just a little lack of mental concentration. After I went back into practice and started concentrating on holding football, uh, it's worked out for me quite well the last couple of weeks. 
Cody. Thanks very much. Congratulations again. I have Scott Laidlaw down here, but I think we have to go back to the booth of Brent Busberger. So, Brent. All right, Irv. Thank you very much. And, of course, one thing to keep in mind, Dallas a week from Sunday plays New England. What a game that's going to be. And Washington has to regroup in time for Miami. Jane, where's Jack Whitaker gone? He's standing by. He also has a report for us. Uh, Jack? Thank you, Jane. About a week ago yesterday, I was standing in a hotel bar in Sydney, Australia, and in walked Miller Barber, who's the number one football fan on the PGA Tour. And he said, Jack, do you believe what Dallas did to Green Bay? And I said, no, I hadn't seen the game. And he said, they're the best football team I ever saw. Well, I'm inclined to agree with Miller after today. What Dallas has done now since that loss to Miami has put three very strong games together against Green Bay, against New Orleans last week, and here today, one of the strongest performances ever. Yes, Washington offensively was lacking because of a lot of injuries, but defensively, they're still pretty good, and one had the feeling today Dallas might have beaten any team of the 20, other 25. They're going into the momentum very well. It has to carry them through the playoffs into the championship game. And next week, they get a good test, too. And I think Tom Landry has them ready. All right, Brent. Jack, thank you very much. Prior to the start of the game, Greek, you and I talked about the absence of Robert Newhouse and what it might mean to the Cowboys. Yeah, but you know what Tex told us, that he was just as good, runs a little faster, and blocks as well. But I still like Newhouse for that four yards. All right, Laidlaw is standing by with Irv Cross down on the field. Let's go to them now, Irv. Brent, here he is. Scott Laidlaw had a real big day and had, of course, a big pair of shoes to fill today because Robert Newhouse was out and he did a big job, uh, Scott. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it was just an enjoyable day today. It's the best way to spend Thanksgiving and get everybody in the game. And uh, I fortunately had a pretty good day and we had a terrific day blocking on the line. You know, in all honesty, I mean, you've been here for a while. You know the Dallas Cowboys system well. Robert Newhouse is a starting fullback. You've played a lot of football down here and you've always played well, haven't you? Well, I, it's been enjoyable. I always seem to get up for the occasion. The last time I started, I think I had the same stats the first half. And uh, I've just had some real good luck. It seems as though the offensive line has, has blocked well just about the time I get in. So it's been tremendous. What kind of a ball carrier are you? What kind of style of carrying the ball do you have? Would you say you're a power back, a quick back? A, what kind of football player is uh, Scott Lee? Oh, maybe a little bit of a small Larry Zonk. I don't have a lot of speed. You see, I got caught from behind. But uh, I just have to probably try for a good body lane and, and uh, go where there nobody else at. Scott, thanks very much and congratulations. Nobody else was there. 37 to 10, the Dallas Cowboys. Brent. All right, Eric, a small Larry Zonka is good enough, folks. And the NFL <laughs> today will continue on CBS in just a moment. Some people are worried about points in the first and the second game really doesn't matter. Dallas has won the tiebreaker if Washington should come back and catch them in the NFC East. Let's take a look at how the Dallas victory unfolded this afternoon in Irving, Texas. Roger Staubach on the scramble for 15 yards, Coach Allen. Well, there's his running ability we talked about at the start of the show picking up a vital first down and going forward, not sliding into second base. Now, that set up a field goal, and here's 50 yards to Tony Hill, George. On the button, accurately thrown, fine catch. The defender played the, the man rather than the ball. Now Washington gives it up here. Riggins on the fumble. This was a costly turnover. He had good yardage. Barnes will return this to the eight-yard line for the Cowboys. And from there, George, Scott Laidlaw took it in for the touchdown. Yes, he went over the top, and that's the way to score, over the top. Drew Pearson, one of the finest receivers in the NFL, 53-yard scoring play. Another well-thrown ball. Starbuck had good protection. Here he is hitting him again, George. What have you got to do against Pearson? Well, you got to double him most of the time. You got to try to jam him and not let him get off the line of scrimmage. And Roger Starbuck told Jane last night that the Cowboys were oh so ready for Joe Theismann and the Washington Redskins. And he was right as you watch that defensive pressure come right down the middle and Fax Iceman. And you know, George, I've got a question about play calling. I just have to ask it. Late in the game in the third quarter and the fourth, I couldn't believe that the Redskins were running. I think they ran five straight times when they were way down. Well, Joe isn't calling his plays. You know, the plays are all sent in from the sidelines. 
Okay. Jane, we've got to go back to New York tomorrow, the NFL today on Sunday. Uh, what are some of the things we've got to look forward to? Well, Brent, Sunday we can look forward to an interview that I did with Joe Namath. And I think Joe a lot of Namath? Yes, a lot Where's of people... Where's your contact <laughs> with Broadway I Freeway I finally Jones. caught him. I've been after him for three weeks, but I caught him in Fort Lauderdale, and he's going to tell us what he's up to most recently. No and more football comebacks, right? I mean, he's No, no. As a matter of fact, he made a very interesting comment. I think a lot of people might be interested to...